Okay, what we have here is a Tyros 4 with intermittent and un, uh, actually done the D3 key. There's possibly a contact so bad, we will have to disassemble and inspect it to see if it needs cleaning or replacement. Uh, we have a sustained sound at times. Sometimes the key is completely dead, and other times it's just at a low volume. Here we go. Okay, we've taken the keyboard, laid it upside down on the table with a cushion on each end blocking it to keep the keys, any pressure off the keys and buttons. Then we remove on the outside circumference 17 screws all the way around. That's your outer hookup, plus there's four screws in this recess in the center. One here, one here, one here, and one right here. That's four of them. All screws are removed. Now we'll reverse this keyboard, turn it back on its base, being sure to hold it together at our handle hold so that it doesn't separate until we have it turned over. Now you may notice I have a towel rolled on the back side of the keyboard. When I take this top off, I'll rest it upon that and then against the wall. By supporting it here, we won't have to remove the other cables that might be connecting this top to it. Okay, to remove this cover, the top, lift on the rear slightly. Be careful so you don't break any of the contacts. Pick it up, car to front to clear, very carefully. Lay it on that towel and back against the wall. There'll be plenty of slack in your cables to do this. If you are going to separate it completely, then you'll have to remove these covers and disconnect the wiring harnesses. But as long as you have something to support it, you're okay at this point. As you know, all these keyboards or any electronic will accumulate dust inside from the cooling fans and the thing blowing. So before you go into taking anything apart or moving anything, Take a couple Q-tips, put them together, and go in any of the nooks and crannies that you can reach and see if there's any dander, dust, lint, you never know, ants. This keyboard is very clean. A little lint. But it looks pretty good. Now uh, you can see we marked the keys that we had a problem with. And it was the D3 here, which is on your third ribbon over oh, here. 13 contact ribbon, 12 contact ribbon, and another 12 contact ribbon. And then you'll have two more 12 contacts 
uh, the rest of the way through the keyboard. Now you have your key lock on here. That is this band right here. It's section. So this section right here should be the one that I'd be able to take off that will cover me because here's the end of my ribbon right here. And that's uh, Phillips. I have a little parts tray with separate compartments to keep all your screws separate. You may run into it with different sizes and then this way here. And I put them in the order as I disassemble. Okay, I'm removing the key keeper. You have to remove the white keys before the black keys. This is at the end of where our ribbon is. So I'm going to go, this would be the first key. You do it, you push it to the rear and lift. And I see, I may have to take the other, the other one off because I have to remove a white key on each side of the black. So I will have to remove the other keeper, the other key keeper. Let the back come up. Okay, there's your key. You have a key cap that you have to watch for. Okay, you see that great? That is a, they call it a key cap. Be careful when you take your key off. Sometimes that will come off. You don't want to lose it or drop it or step on it. It's just plastic and it slides down on the base of that key chassis. Okay, and just ahead of it, you can see the rubber from the strip and there's your spring. Okay, when I take these apart, I will lay them all in the order that I take them off. They are, the springs are interchangeable by the numbers, but because I just want to put them back in the same place where they were. Uh, sorry, I forgot to show you how to remove the keys and you wouldn't be able to see too good for where the camera was before. So the camera's reset up again and I'll show you how to remove a key. Uh, just remember, the white keys have to come out to get the black one out. You have to have it clear on both sides. Now I'll go into the C2 bracket and I'll just to show you how I remove the keys. I'll remove these first two keys here and the black one. Okay, we start by pushing back 
on the front of the key and lift in the rear just lightly and pop it up come forward slowly and up you don't want to lose this guide you don't want this guide cap to fall off now it, they seem to be fairly snug but they are mentioned in the manual that they can come off this is your ribbon I've already removed the other ribbon and inspected it and it seems to be fine uh, there was quite a bit of dirt uh, dust and lint um, I bet they'll show you <laughs> that was tucked well in on the circuit board uh, that may have been the problem the rubber itself looks very good the carbons all seem well nowhere now remember when you remove this ribbon your contact strip you'll see there's a little triangle on your little arrow pointing and it's pointing to the back of the machine that's the way it goes on if you turn it the wrong way your velocities will be wrong and your volumes will be wrong and it will go either way so make note of that when you take it off you'll notice that the arrow is on this one here and it's the arrow is at the front pointing toward the rear when you pull this strip check for little cuts in the rubber that may be where if you have a problem because sometimes if the rubber is cut it won't spring back and that could give you a hang up number two the one that had the problem here for me with D is this one right here but I can see nothing wrong with it the contacts the carbon contacts look very good uh, they're not tarnished at all the circuit board is nice and clean there's no tarnish on that but as I said there was dust in there and that may have uh, caused the erratic behavior I'll see when the new strip comes it should be here on UPS in about 20 minutes these are your springs they're all the same size very easy to install they slide in on the back of the rack and you'll notice there's a little slot in it that goes over a detent just slide it in put it down wiggle it back and forth a little bit now when you put it in you can put it in backwards but you'll look and it won't be it won't be straight it will be on a slight angle okay I'll quit now and I'm going to clean a little bit more I'll probably pull some more keys and see if there's any more dirt on the other ones but this is the only one that gave us a problem but seeing as I got it this far I'll remove a few more keys and check for any more dirt on it okay the new strip has arrived I'm going to try to do this around the camera and I'll show you how to install it As I told you, had that little arrow pointing to the rear and up to the front. And what it does, it's the long, you got different size contacts. That's why it's got to be a particular way. Lay it on the board. And you'll see where those little holes will all line up. When you see it's in all the holes like this, use a paper clip now this paper clip might be too big I might have to go get a regular another uh, paper clip a smaller one and now I have a smaller paper clip be a little bit easier put it right in the hole push down the hole push down push down
There. All in. Now I move some of the springs here. We'll just make sure that they're all seated back properly. Okay. Now I'll use the round, the round end, and just go double check. But I can see that it's down real good, so. Okay, got new strips installed. Now I'll put the keys on, and then I think I'm going to do is I'm going to remove some of the other keys and clean up underneath it anyway while I got it apart. Okay, I'll clean and uh, install the black keys first. The black keys, you can always tell. They'll be on the spring, the furthest back from you. They have to be installed first before the white keys. So lower key down, level. Don't lower the front too much because damage the cap. Push back and down. Okay, now push forward. Let's slide it on. Level. There you go. Okay. Okay, now I'll install the white keys. I can only, I'm only going to install some because I'm going to remove some of the other keys here to clean. So I'll skip the white key here and I will skip the, I can put this white key on.
Okay, uh, keys are all in place. The key keepers are installed. Just take it once more, look over, make sure the wires got darned loose or anything. Uh, doing it this way here, there's and not separating the cover completely and saves a lot of trouble of probably doing hookups back up later. Otherwise, you'd be taking your power supply covers off and everything else to get at these leads. Okay, to install a cover, gently pick it up, lay it forward, come ahead of your keys, move gently. back in place. Feel around and it should feel all lined up. Yeah. I want my cushions back in place for when I flip it so I'll move them under right now. Now you have your handles on each side, and by gripping it there, you can hold the case together to get it to flip it over. Then you set it down. There you go. Now reinstall the 17 screws and the four across the center. I'm doing it in the order that they're removed, so I'll do the four in the center first that we're in the center channel. Tight, but make sure they are snug. You don't want to fall out when you're doing a gig. Okay. 